Welcome again to Treasured. Here we are, just kicking off week 30. And let's begin by reviewing last week's memory verse, because this week is a continuation of last week's passage. So last week, we worked to memorize Ephesians 6, 10, and 11. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by His vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. Ephesians 6, 10, and 11. And we talked about the importance of being prepared to take a stand against the attacks of this world, against against the attacks of this the the devil, and uh, that it's it's so critical for us in living a righteous, Christ honoring life that we be prepared to take a stand. And God's word tells us to put on the armor of God in order to be prepared. And now we're going to look a little bit more this week about. Well, why it's important, uh, who our enemies really are in this battle for righteousness and Christ-like living, and we'll go over without memorizing some of the things that we're supposed to be putting on, some of the aspects, the armor, if you will, that we're supposed to put on. So this week's memory verse is Ephesians 6, 12 and 13. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having prepared everything, to take your stand. Now, uh, it's really interesting to look here. Like we talked last week, that the, the letter of Ephesians has for us a number of walks to remind us how to live as believers. But then finally, we're going to come to a place in our Christian life where we're going to have to take a stand. And this isn't militaristic in and of itself, but rather it is a spiritual battle in which we will have to stand firmly on the advances that that the Holy Spirit has already brought into our life. That as we are applying his teaching and his word, and we're we're submitting ourselves to one another. We're we're loving and submitting to one another in in, in uh, the household. We are watching what we say. We are watching our, our anger. We're being careful about forgiving one another, like it talks about in chapter four. And all of that walk. Eventually, there's going to come a day where we're going to face trial and temptation and persecution and trouble, and we have to be ready to stand. And the only way that we can be ready to take a stand and keep those spiritual gains in our own life and in the life of our church family is to put on the armor of God. And the reason we have to put on the armor of God is because this is not a simply a physical battle, but instead, verses 12 and 13 give us what kind of battle it is. So if you look with me again at uh, chapter 6, verse 12, it says uh, this, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. So we, we are going to be fighting a battle. We're going to be having to take a stand for the truth of our faith, for the, the progress that we've made in righteousness and holiness, we're going to have to stand up and stand firm. And the reason we must turn to the power of God once again in standing firm and not relying on our own good works or our own strength is because the battle that we'll be fighting, the stand that we'll be taking, is one that is spiritual, not physical. Now, of course, it's going to have physical elements, and we will face people who are in and of themselves enemies of the truth and and evil even. No one would look in the the history of of mankind and and take the uh, the, the conquerors and the, the evil men and women who have done terrible things and say, oh, it wasn't their fault. They were just under the influence of evil spiritual forces. But we understand that even the physical evil that is around us that is rightly judged by a righteous God is flowing from a spiritual battle that we cannot see. And all the things that are listed here uh, in in verse 12, we have rulers and authorities and cosmic powers and evil spiritual forces. These are all just differing aspects of potential spiritual enemies that we will face And it's not that we need to worry about their faces. It's not that we need to worry about 
well, who are they and what are their names? And sometimes we can get caught up in things like angelology or demonology and get more concerned about things that are we're supposed to be uh, preparing against and, and, and repelling instead of uh, really worrying about our own spiritual walk and our own relationship with God. And really, that's, that's what we're being encouraged here, too, is to ignore the powers, in a sense, because we're, we're not fighting against people, so, so don't get your fists up, don't gather up weapons in your household, but instead understand your, your first and most important battle is a spiritual battle. And there are enemies, but it is for this reason, verse 13, for this reason, take up the full armor of God. For what reason? Well, because you're fighting a spiritual battle. Now, don't get consumed with all of these different spiritual forces you'll be fighting. Instead, put on the armor of God. Instead, work on your relationship with God through your Savior, Jesus Christ. Instead, trust in the power of the King who's already won through the power of the cross and his resurrection. And so we shouldn't get consumed with the principalities or the powers or the demons or the, the, the spiritual forces that we'll be standing against. But instead, we are supposed to be filled up and equipped by the power of our God and, and more concerned with him than we are with them because we understand that in his power, there will be victory. So verse 13 then says, For this reason, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day and having prepared everything to take your stand. So we put on God's armor. We equip ourselves for the right battle. Now, if you are going to have a, a, a physical battle out here in, in, in the flesh and blood world, and you know you've got an enemy that has a tank, you don't go out with a squirt gun. Instead, you equip yourself as well as you can for the battle that is ahead. And that's what this passage is about. There is a battle coming for every Christian in which they must take a stand. And the battle is not physical, it is spiritual. And it's against powerful spiritual forces. And so you must be equipped in the most powerful way you can. And that is with the armor of God in order to take a stand for righteousness. Now, this passage goes on to explain what the armor of God looks like. It is the belt of truth around your waist, verse 14. Uh, righteousness, uh, a chest plate, an armor on your chest. And, and, and truth and righteousness, those are aspects of who you are. You are a truthful, faithful person, a person pursuing the righteousness of Christ and right living. That you are, um, your feet are sandaled with the readiness for the gospel of peace. In other words, you, you are fully equipped by the gospel, that it has changed you, made you a new creation, given you the ability to stand in a different manner. Uh, that we have the shield of faith, and it's not some some the, the shield of the faith, but it is a shield of trusting in God, relying upon His strength, relying upon His protection. Even as we know that we are uh, given a helmet of salvation, and salvation protects us, it keeps us, it equips us fully for the battle, as well as the sword of the Spirit, the very Word of God. And so we prepare in the armor of God to take a stand for the righteousness that's been ever increasing in our lives by allowing these characteristics, by, by intentionally choosing these characteristics to become a, a defining factor in who we are. And so this week's memory verse, Ephesians 6, 12 and 13, for our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having prepared everything, to take your stand. Ephesians 6, 12, and 13. It's this final step in being prepared to take a stand. Understanding our enemy, other spiritual forces. It's not a, a physical battle, but a spiritual battle. And that the only way we can be prepared is to grow closer to our Savior, to put on the full armor of God, to walk fully in who we are in Christ, and then stand firmly upon, upon the ever-increasing work of righteousness that he's doing in our life, that we might look more like him. Brothers and sisters, the Christian life, it is a beautiful thing, but it is not always an easy thing. And there are going to be moments where you're going to have to stand. And the only way you will be able to stand, the only way you will be prepared for the coming spiritual battles 
is to put on the armor of God. And the armor of God consists of a right relationship with the Father through Christ Jesus, in which you experience ever-increasing honesty with yourself, truthfulness, righteousness by the, the redeeming power of the Holy Spirit, faith as you trust in Him more and more, uh, a protection from your salvation, knowing that nothing can touch you in Christ Jesus, and then being fully equipped with, with His Word as you hide it in your heart and take it up as a sword to fight against the enemies that will come. So we have a spiritual battle ahead of us. And the last couple of weeks of memory verses have told us there will come a day, and the only way you can be prepared for the battles that are coming, for the spiritual conquests that are going to come against you, is to draw closer to your God, to put on His armor, to understand the enemy, and then finally, when you've done everything you can to prepare, to stand. So let's look at all four verses together. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13. Finally, be strengthened by the Lord and by his vast strength. Put on the full armor of God so that you can stand against the schemes of the devil. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having prepared everything, to take your stand. Brothers and sisters, fights are coming in your life. Spiritual battles are coming. And you must prepare yourself. And the only way to prepare yourself is to put on the full armor of God. To, to grow in your relationship with Him. To grow in Christ-like character. And then when the day comes to fight, to stand firmly upon what you already know to be true in your life, relying fully upon the salvation given to you through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and using wisely the sword that you've been given to defend yourself, God's word. Remember, we are treasuring up his word in our hearts so that we might not sin against him. And here we find out in this passage that it actually becomes a sword that we might stand firm against the attacks of our spiritual enemies. This week's verse, Ephesians 6, 12 and 13. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers of this darkness, against evil spiritual forces in the heavens. For this reason, take up the full armor of God, so that you may be able to resist in the evil day, and having prepared everything, to take your stand. Prepare, take your stand, know your enemy, but know where your strength comes from, God and God alone. Thank you.